this congregation does not have to be convinced of the marvelous, magnificent, towering, inexhaustible, unsearchable treasures of the Word of God. But if we were to follow the advice of Dr. Charles Swindoll, that we would give careful attention to every word of Scripture, we might discover it even more magnificent and more fascinating. Read the word slowly. Read the word editorially. Read the word methodically. Pondering slowly, carefully, every word. That's what brings us to our text this morning. It's a marvelous text. Broad and grand and expansive. In this first chapter of the missive to the Hebrew Christians struggling and discouraged. Some say Paul wrote it, we don't know. It has no signature. But he starts with God, who at different times and in different manners, different times and different manners spoke. We know God, and this is a theological truth, we know God not because we have searched him out, but we know God because of his own will and volition he has made himself known. God self-revealed. Now nature reveals God in one aspect. History reveals God. Israel reveals God. But, but, but had not God made himself known, we would not know him. God, who had different ways, in different manners, in different ways, spoke to the fathers by the prophets. Through, through the medium of prophets, he spoke. But in these times, his final revelation, his supreme revelation of himself, he did it in Jesus, the Christ. Put a pen there, I'll come back. The brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, by whom he made the worlds. Then, ponder the words. When he had purged our sins. The next part is what grabs our attention, or it should. Sat down. Sat down. How does that fit with what we just read? The brightness of his image, the express image of his person, by whom he made the worlds. Why would the writer add the words, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. How did that get in there? Well, if you think about it, two things come to mind. Jesus is his name, Yeshua, but, but it's really Jesus. Christ is not his last name. That's his title. Christ, Christos, Messiah, Christ, Greek. Messiah, English. I don't know why we keep speaking in Greek. It's really Christ. It's Jesus, the Messiah. And the Messiah had three roles. Priest, prophet, and king. Now stop with the priestly part. That might help us with the sitting down part. In the Old Testament, uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, before God brought Israel out of Egypt, man approached God through altars that they built. Abraham built altars. Isaac built altars. Jacob built altars. Notice there was no altar building when they were slaves in Egypt. But when God brought them out of Egypt, in addition to giving them the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, beginning in the 25th chapter of Exodus, he gave them instructions on the building of the tabernacle which became later under the ministry of David and Solomon in Jerusalem on Mount Zion, the temple. Man's approach to God. Now, later on, after Israel had gone into captivity, they had what was called the synagogue. Now, the synagogue was for man. It had, had, a, had a center aisle with a seat over here and a seat over here. It had like a pulpit and places to sit down. But the temple was for God. 
And uh, the temple, beginning with the tabernacle, the temple was just a large expression of that rickety contraption that they built in the wilderness. It was in Shiloh before it was placed in Jerusalem by David and built by Solomon. But look at it. The one thing you won't find in it was a seat. That was the outer court. That was the seven foot high altar where sacrifices were made, but no seats. The priest would wrestle those animals up the steps to be sacrificed, let the blood drain down on the right side of the altar. Then that was the labor where he washed himself after sacrificing. And by the way, I, I'm sorry you don't know it, and I apologize to have to tell you, but although the priest's garments were white and beautiful, but when he wrestled with the animals, he got bloody. Some of us don't, you don't know yet. This ain't cute stuff I got on. When you put on this stuff, you go to work. I'm sorry, choir. I should have told you 20 years ago when you joined the choir and joined the deacon's ministry and become a, a, a deaconess or an usher, it, it ain't to look good. It's to go to work. You got to wrestle with the sacrifice. And if you don't get any blood on you, you're not doing the Lord's work. Somebody told us that lie that church ought to be cute and pretty, but if you're really a servant of the Lord, it's some blood in it. It's some sacrifice in it. The, the job of the priest was blood work. He got blood all over him, but he washed himself in the labor of it. Then, but I don't see any seats. Well, let's go into the tabernacle. Well, there's a candelabra. There's a table of showbread with 12 loaves of bread. There's the altar of incense, but I declare I don't see any seats. There's a red, scarlet, and blue curtain about the size of a man's hand. And oh my God, on the other side of that curtain is a spooky dark place where there sits that gold box with those cherubims called the Ark of the Covenant which contained the law that written by the hand of God and Aaron's rod that budded on top of the mercy seat where the priest went once a year and sprinkled blood. But I declare Ain't a seat nowhere. Sorry, preachers, ain't no seats for you. Sorry, deacons, ain't no seats for you. The priest never sat down in the temple. Never did. But the writer of the Hebrews says, when he purged our sins, he sat down. Now, I want to know why could he sit down and the other priests couldn't sit down. Well, the other priests took the blood of bulls and goats and heifers. But that blood didn't take away sin. For you see, God cannot fellowship with sin. So in order... For man to have fellowship with God, he's got to get sin out of his sight. But all of the sacrifices of the Old Testament did not take away sin. They just covered sin. So God didn't have to look at it. But the priest had to go on Sunday and sacrifice. And the people messed up, so he had to go back on Monday and sacrifice. And Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday, and every year, the priest had to go sacrifice. But one day, on a skull-shaped hill outside of Jerusalem, the real Lamb of God. Climb that awful skull shaped hill. And once and for all, not, 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 not covered our sin, but took away our sin and declared, tell it is finished. You never got to come back and make another offering. Don't kill any 
more lambs. Don't kill any more, any more bulls and heifers and goats. It's done once and for all. Sin has been forgiven now. I can't get this excited today. Now and forever. So when he finished, he did what the priest could not do. He sat down because the work is done now. It's finished now. He's put an end to sin. When he sat down, when he sat down, sin was washed away when he sat down. He broke the backbone of sin's power when he sat down. He washed away sin forever when he sat down. Death lost its sting and the grave lost its victory when he sat down. He had the keys of death, hell, and the grave when he sat down. The requirements of the law were fulfilled when he sat down. The justice of God was satisfied when he sat down. The prosecution rested and the defense made its case when he sat down. The door to heaven was open when he sat down. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole is not nail to his cross and I bear it no more when he sat down every sin was washed away the devil's hold on me was lost the case was dismissed the prodigal was returned to the father's house the gate of heaven was open the tree of life is available when he sat down he sat down because it's finished it's done come to the fountain so rich and so sweet cast our poor soul at the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to his name glory 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 to his name sin is finished he sat down because for the first time Sin's power was broken and the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom. And now I and you and we can go in to the very presence of the Lord. And I tell you this, and I bid you good morning. It says, he sat down. He sat down. Look at this church. And the Bible says, we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. I may be going through trials down now, but I'm seated with Christ. I might be catching hell in New Orleans, but I'm seated with Christ. Things might not be like I want them to be, but I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places ain't that good news ain't that good news he sat down and I'm sitting with him in victory no.